Let's start here. G4S security guard at the Mangong Correctional Centre has been arrested in connection with Tabobesta's escape. The 51-year-old man was taken into custody yesterday. He's expected to appear before the Bloemfontein Magistrate Court tomorrow, facing charges of assisting an inmate to escape from lawful custody and defeating the ends of justice. ENCA's Avi Umtila joins me from Cape Town with all those details. Avi, well, well we've been waiting for this. Um, so talk to me uh, about this latest arrest and what is known about this man. He's a 51-year-old G4S employee, security guard, we understand, that's making his first appearance at the Bloemfontein Magistrate Court. Tomorrow, of course, we'll be bringing you that after he was arrested yesterday. I was about to allude, Sally, to the fact that he may be part of the seven that were suspended, as we heard in Parliament yesterday. But then I just browsed through the statement one more time, and it suggests that he was arrested at the Mangawung Correctional Center. That means possibly that he was on duty and not part of the seven that were suspended. Remember that the seven we heard in Parliament yesterday, I beg your pardon, just last week, they mm -hmm. were suspended after an unauthorized vehicle made its way into the Mangawung Correctional Center uh, days before uh, Besta escaped. That vehicle is suspected to be the one that brought in that dead corpse that later then went on to be touted as Tabo Besta. So that already suggests that there's a lot more that we can expect, Sally, as Athlenda Mate uh, from the South African Police Service has suggested that we can wait for more arrests. That's, of course, after that news broke that the 51-year-old security G4S has been arrested. Let's take a listen to Athlenda and what she had to say. The suspect was arrested on Tuesday at the Mangaung Correctional Center in Bloemfontein. He faces a charge of assisting an inmate to escape from lawful custody, as well as defeating the ends of justice. Police investigations continue into the escape from lawful custody of Tabo Bester. Our team's investigations are at a very advanced and critical stage. We continue to gather and collect evidence uh, between Gauteng and the Free State. We cannot at this stage rule out the possibility of more arrests in this matter. We also continue to welcome the assistance from members of the public who continue to share information with law enforcement authorities. Now, within the charges, there are, there's a multiple murder charge. Um, do we know who this relates to? Because the knowledge we have at the moment is that there were three dead bodies in play. Uh, one ended up being placed in the cell, but that they were taken from mortuary, so not necessarily murdered, dead bodies, perhaps unclaimed. Um, but this murder charge does just bring some very interesting questions to light, doesn't it? It's the bone of contention or the confusing one, Sally, if you like. Of course, we do understand that Dr. Nandipa Makudumana is alleged to have taken three bodies from the mortuaries around Free State, one of them being taken on the 8th of April and then later on found with that tag from the mortuary just a day later on the 9th. That's just days, of course, before the escape itself. So you wonder these murder charges. In fact, it's some of the conversations that I've been having uh, today. I had one with Professor Jacob Mufogeng from the uh, Twana University of Technology, who suggests that that murder charge could be linked to the body that was found in that infamous cell 35. Of course, the autopsy already suggested that that body was dead by the time that it was there. And in fact, it died from uh, a, a blunt wound trauma that suggested that, mm. uh, you know, there was some object that hit it in the head. So the police now want to investigate and uh, see if that body was killed by the four already that have been charged. Remember that uh, Zolile Sekeleni, the murder charge has been retracted against him, but the four others still face that charge. In fact, let's listen in on that conversation I had a bit earlier on with Professor Jacob Mufogeng. Forensic indicated that, you know, before the fire, you know, could be set alight, the, the, the person, uh, uh, the body that was found in cell 35 was already, you know, uh, this, there was no life. So indicating that the, the the investigating officers still need to determine whether this person was killed, you know, or can be linked to this particular uh, people, or whether they will claim uh, they will have claimed this body somewhere else. So because uh, if 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 you look read them, then this this uh, these charges. 
uh, they, they will say a matter of a number of bodies that were found in her position. So, uh, but again, uh, when you also read, you'll see that they will say the body that was found in cell 35, you know, because then it will be linked to murder. So I think for now, as the NPA indicated that, you know, there are provisional charges, they will still need to determine whether, apart from, you know, other bodies that were claimed. So could there be this other body that was found in cell 35, whether it was indeed claimed at Okay, so I, I mean, that makes sense, actually, until the police fully investigate exactly where those bodies come from. There is a possibility uh, that they could have been murdered by the suspects, I suppose. Let's drill down more into the charges against Dr. Nandipa Magudumara. What is she facing exactly? So a number of charges, Sally, uh, alongside the co-accused. Remember, five of them already appeared before court facing charges such as defeating the ends of justice, uh, arson, that would be linked to accused number two, the G4S security for setting the cell alight, the allegations there. Um, the charges of fraud, charges uh, around aiding and abetting, you know, an escapee. Some of what uh, Nani Pamakutumana faces. Remember, there's that violation of a body that would talk to the bodies uh, that she took allegedly from these mortuaries, violating them just by taking them. And the fraudulent part, uh, remember, accused number five in this matter is Tabo Pesta. She's accused number four, where you'd hear Professor Mofogeng try to explain how then the fraud charges uh, are then related to the two of them, even though uh, we understand Tabo Pesta was in, inside prison at that time. But in fact, let's just hear once more Professor Jacob Mofogeng just to try to um, get us a better understanding of exactly even what Tabo Paul Leopoldo, that's the, uh, the, the Integraton Solutions ITian, uh, what he faces even. Let's take a listen to that. The charges were, that were added to him were defeating the administration of justice because, remember, he tampered with the, the CCTV. So whatever that he did, it means that he, he willingly and knowingly that Tababesta is a convicted criminal, and then by his action of tampering with the CCTV, then he, you know, participated regarding the defeating the ends of, you know, of, of justice. Dr. Nandipa was also found in a position of uh, three bodies to be linked to, to her. That is a violation of the body. So we are talking now um, regarding accused number four and five. Uh, that is a body collected at the mortuary as well as the violation of the body regarding the body in cell number 35. So, and then two counts of fraud regarding accused number four and five by claiming bodies at the mortuary and the national hospital. All right, thank you so much for that, Ian Abi Abiyu Mtila in Cape Town.